Good morning. Happy Friday. I have for us our final chapter of our Ready Freddy book. We've been reading Stop That Hamster uh, by Abby Klein. And our last chapter is Harold's Adventures Part 2. So Freddy <laughs> convinced his mom to let him bring the hamster home and said he was going to be the king of responsibility. And his mom agreed as long as he and Susie shared the responsibilities. And then as he was taking care of the hamster for the night, because it was his turn, he had Robbie sleep over and the hamster got out. So they worked together, they found the hamster, and then the hamster got out again. So I'm wondering if Freddie is actually going to write in Harold's journal about exactly what happened. Like, is he going to let everybody know? Is he going to keep it to himself? Um, so I am curious to find out if that's what happens in our last chapter. All right, let's do it. On Monday, I couldn't wait to share what I wrote in the hamster journal with the rest of the class. Finally, after lunch, it was my turn. Come to the rug, everybody, said Mrs. Wushy. Freddie's going to tell us about his weekend with Harold. I sat down in the teacher's chair, and before I even said one word, Max blurted out, What color nail polish did Harold get this weekend? Candy apple red? Max said Mrs. Wishy, What did I tell you about yelling out? It's not your turn right now. It's Freddie's. I cleared my throat, opened the journal to my page, and started reading. Harold had a really fun weekend. Robbie and I built him a spaceship and flew to the planet Greep. There he met an alien named Titu, who gave him a tour of the planet. I took a pic picture of Harold in the spaceship. You can see him right here, I said, turning the journal around and showing everyone the picture. He's in the cockpit. Cool, said Max. That sounds like a lot more fun than getting your hair and nails done by Miss Fancy Pants. Max said Mrs. Wishy, and she put her finger to her lips. Go ahead, Freddie. Then Robbie and I had a skateboard contest and Harold got to be the judge. Jessie raised her hand. Yes, Jessie, said Mrs. Wishy. Thank you for raising your hand. Who won the contest? No one. Harold fell asleep before he could announce the winner. Everyone giggled. I fed Harold some toast, but what he really wanted was chocolate chip pancakes. Chloe raised her hand. Why didn't you give him any pancakes? Because the instructions on the cage said toast or hamster food, nothing else. Well, I gave him a piece of chocolate chip cookie and he loved it. You're lucky you didn't kill him, said Max. Don't be silly. Cookies don't kill him. Besides, they were homemade. Cookies aren't good for hamsters, Chloe, said Mrs. Wishy. Boys and girls, when it's your turn to take Harold home, please follow the instructions like Freddie did and only give Harold toast or his hamster food. We want to make sure he stays healthy. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Freddie? Yes. One more thing. Robbie looked up at me with surprise. I have some advice. Oh, you do, said Mrs. Wishy. I'm sure everyone would like to hear it. I picked up the journal one more time and looked right at Robbie. Make sure you close the latch tightly after you give Harold food and water. You wouldn't want him to escape. That is good advice, said Mrs. Wishy. Thank you for sharing your weekend with us, Freddie. It sounds as if you and Harold had a wonderful time together. I'm so glad your mother lets you take him home. Me too. We had a great time. I closed the journal, handed it back to Mrs. Wishy, and picked up Harold's cage. This was a weekend we'll never forget. Right, little guy? I said as we both pressed our noses against the side of the cage. Then I smiled at Harold, and I know he smiled back. Oh, and there's his lucky shark tooth. <laughs> so he did not tell everybody what happened, but just gave them a little bit of advice so that it wouldn't happen to them. All right. And as always, at the end of our book, Dear reader, I'm a kindergarten and first grade teacher. My friend, who is also a teacher, really does have a hamster named Harold in her classroom. The students in her class get to take Harold home for the weekend. They write about their adventures with Harold in a special hamster journal. The stories in that journal gave me ideas for this book. One little girl in her class really did paint Harold's toenails with pink polish. I thought that was hilarious. I hope you have as much fun reading Stop That Hamster as I had writing it. Happy reading, Abby Klein. So just as we say all the time when we're writing, authors write about what they know best. And Abby Klein always comes up with some kind of inspiration for her book from either her own kids or her students. Her ideas are always from what she deals with and what she knows every single day. All right. I can't wait for next week for us to start a whole new series. We're going to have to put Ready Freddy on hold for right now because I'm all out of Ready Freddy books. 
All right, guys. See you later. Have a great weekend. Miss you.